the dread of not really knowing where to go in this game and whether the itsy bitsy little cute metroids are really extinct that's the dread in this game the dread returns with metroid dread so this game came out a few months ago uh i was on the fence i read some of the reviews i have to admit and i was like okay i'm not a huge metroid guy i have to say that put that out there right away so i wasn't so keen on spending 80 clams or 80 metroids on this game and i managed to get it for a little bit less than that i think it was 50. so i'm now covering this game i know it's been a few months it's been what uh whatever what is that oh seven months wow half a year but anyways finally there's a metroid review a metroid dread review for you guys and this is like the first metroid game in 19 years it's hard it just blows my mind after living through all the metroid primes and never actually beating them um but beating metroid fusion ha that's where it counts for me and uh yeah, it's just mind-blowing. <laughs> Zeb's blowing. Whatever. Um, that it's been 19 years since there's last been a Metro game. Now, side topic. It's been many years since an F-Zero game, too. So, Nintendo. Anyways. Um, so, since then, a lot of games have attempted the Metrovania style, advanced it, yet the excitement for this game was immense. When people knew it was on the horizon and there were rumors for years and years oh we're getting a new game it's called metroid dread and it's a multiplayer game like there were all sorts of rumors going around and then finally it's like oh it's a one player game uh, so who knows the backstory of all that but the backstory of this game is the galactic federation sent a bunch of these indestructible emmi robots to investigate the reappearance of x parasites on the planet zdr lose contact with them and yet again the Galactic Federation relies on Samus Aran, famous bounty hunter, to investigate. So when you encounter some of these EMMI robots and get caught, there's a sudden quick time event that occurs. I assume this happens later with like the proper bosses. Um, so even far even on normal like these things are so brutal they've killed me at least five times. Like the only thing that has killed me so far, all the other enemies are pretty sad and weak and yeah, no threat. So, the graphics are top notch. The music provides this creepy and eerie mood. It's been a long time since I played a Metro game and since I beat Metro Future, Future Fusion. Um, so, I don't recall hearing any of this music before. So, if this is new stuff, it's, it fits in really well with the Metroid um, theme. Um, the controls are most of the same as every other Metroid. There's a few new pieces of equipment, as is usually the case from what I remember. A uh, slide move, a powerful Omega Cannon, etc. The cutscenes are used sparingly, but like they really immerse the player into the game. They're used when they're needed, which is great. Uh, level design superb, arguably feels very organic to me. Um, you move back and forth between previously seen areas to unlock points in accessible rooms. This is a hallmark of the long-running series of Metroid, and uh, Mercury Steam did well with its execution. Everything about this game, like, this really feels like... I can't recall many games last year that came out on Switch, but this really does feel like one of the best ones. I'm just going to put that out there right so far, and I barely even started playing this game. So, the introduction of these EMMI robot zones they really demand you to go through these levels with like a mixture of stealth and speed. Um, the bosses that are expected really demand a level of skill that few games ask from gamers anymore. I can think of like Dark Souls and pretty much just Dark Souls is the only thing that comes to mind. Maybe if you're trying to like ace Mario Kart and be the best Mario Karter, but there's very few games that will demand skill from a player now. So there are some cons to this, even though like this game is all jazzy and pretty and everything. Um, the biggest detriment to this game, and people will mention this a million times, is the difficulty. The game refuses to help you uh, along the way, expects you to discover the game on your own. Um, I don't think there's, like Metroid Fusion, I think they had an in-game like prodder, like 
Adam wants you to go here. Oh, maybe you should go there. No, this game, from what I've seen, there's none of that. Like, none of that. They do not want to help you. They want the game to be uh, discovered totally by you. So, more than any other previous Metroid game, this game demands, you know, patience, skill, and precision. And to bypass the harder enemies and bosses. And I, I noticed that right, right away. Once you start to get into the game within the first 30 minutes or so, and apparently the game's only seven to eight hours to beat it. And um, apparently 12 to 13 hours to 100% it. So there's obviously no multiplayer, so you're paying 80 Metroids plus tax for a single player experience. And I think that's what a lot of people criticize this game for. Um, and while I'm not the best Metroid player, as I was alluding to at the beginning of this recording, um, I've only beaten Super Metroid, really. Um, this game's oddly addictive. Even though you fail, you, you feel like it's on the player, really. It's not on the game for cheating you. Um, the game plays, game plays fair. Um, but I always wanted to know what was going to happen next, even though I was kind of like, okay, I don't really know where to go right now, but uh, I'm going to try, try something. Um, so if you don't mind a shorter game, a higher quality game, uh, I would recommend picking up Metroid Dread. It's one of the best games of last year for sure. Um, I would say it's definitely a solid 9 out of 10 experience. If you're going for a Metroid experience, if you're going for a one player great experience, go for this. Um, yeah, it's definitely a great experience. It, it's gotten me playing my Nintendo Switch, um, which has been pretty dormant. Um, lately with all the, the game releases, um, you know, everywhere. I've been focusing on PC, to be honest, and this actually got me playing my Switch again, which is a pretty good compliment, really. So, anyways, now we have to go find some Metroids, because I'm not a believer, I'm kind of skeptic that they're all extinct. So, yeah, now we need to have a Metroid Pokemon mashup kind of game, that, that would be interesting. Uh, it would only have like two characters, but hey, who cares? That's the dread that we need. Keep on dreading. Bye.